I'm Kevin Clayton, Chair of Lehigh University's Board of Trustees. It is my honor and privilege to welcome you to this celebration. Although things have been quite challenging for over a year now, there is still so much to celebrate. We gather today virtually to honor the resilience and accomplishment of both our new graduates in the class of 2021 and the graduates of the class of 2020 and to kick off the 153rd commencement weekend. When I graduated as the president of the class of 1984, I was one of about 1,400 graduates. Through the course of this weekend, here in Goodman Stadium, we will confer more than 3,200 bachelor's, master's, and doctoral degrees for the classes of 2020 and 2021. I am in awe of the progress Lehigh has experienced and the tremendous impact our graduates have made and will continue to make in the world carrying the Lehigh legacy. Now, it is my great pleasure to introduce the president of Lehigh University, John Simon. Hello and welcome. It's good to be back here in Goodman Stadium, the site of so many Lehigh commencement ceremonies. We're happy to be able to gather in this stadium over the next several days to celebrate commencement and you, the graduates of the class of 2020 and 2021. Whether you are joining us here in person or virtually, know that we are truly proud to celebrate these graduates, particularly in light of the challenges that they have faced and overcome since March of 2020. And we want to acknowledge the families of our graduates who have supported their students in the face of tremendous uncertainty and helped them to succeed. All of you exhibit the best of Lehigh spirit the grit and the determination to get the job done that are hallmarks of our great university. And like Terry Hart, our commencement speaker, who will tell us today about the unique experience of traveling to space, one day you too will be describing your unique experience, attending and graduating from college in the midst of a global pandemic. So congratulations, graduates, you have truly achieved something remarkable and the best is yet to come. When reminiscing on my experience as a graduate student at Lehigh University, I fondly remember my PhD advisor's passion for education and enthusiasm for spaceflight. Professor Terry Hart often shared stories of his astronaut experience with graduate, undergraduate, and even elementary school students. When it came to education, Professor Hart was always willing to fly the extra mile. I recall a time when a team of students and I were working on a robotic lunar lander, a prototype that was designed to use propulsion to hop across the surface of the moon for the sake of exploration. Of course, a hopper spacecraft is useless if you can't control it. Before the prototype spacecraft made it an inch off the ground, we needed to construct a testing rig that would ensure the safety of both the vehicle and bystanders. Professor Hart, seeing the need, swiftly volunteered to convert the basketball hoop at his family's residence into an impromptu testing rig. Imagine the excitement as a vehicle the size of a coffee table, one that you helped design, lifted up off the ground under its own power while tethered for safety. It was an experience I won't soon forget. Of course, our common interest in spacecraft didn't end with the Lunar Hopper project. Professor Hart and I also share a fondness for the study of system engineering and spacecraft orbital mechanics. As I matured during grad school, this interest blossomed into innovative dissertation research thanks to his guidance and encouragement. This enabled me to land a job at a well-respected national laboratory that specialized in spacecraft-related research. Today, in my current role, I apply the same principles taught by Professor Hart to build successful teams and solve the nation's most difficult engineering problems. And now, it is my pleasure to introduce to you astronaut, airman, engineer, and current professor of practice, Terry J. Hart. Thank you, Andrew, for your kind introduction. And greetings to President Simon, our distinguished trustees, administrators, and guests, fellow members of our faculty and staff, and most of all, to our graduating class and their families. What a wonderful day this is for you. 
So I'd like to begin by sharing with you a tradition we have at NASA. In the months leading up to a launch, NASA conducts a series of full mission simulations with the crew in the simulator and the mission control team at their consoles. In a small room behind mission control sits the simulation supervisor, or SimSoup, who injects timely failures into the simulation calculated to challenge the crew and the mission control team. These simulations go on continuously for several days. And just as the team begins to figure out how to solve one problem, wham, SimSoup hits them with another problem, and then another problem, until they're barely hanging on. Is this starting to sound a little familiar to our new graduates? Ultimately, SimSoup would allow us to finish the simulation with a successful mission, but it was always a struggle to get there. Of course, it was in that struggle that we and our mission controllers learned how best to operate the space shuttle, and more importantly, how to work together as a team. Then, on the very last day of simulations before leaving for the Cape, SimSoup would let the team ride through a flawless launch, followed by a perfect mission. Well, today is that perfect day for you. Our faculty has done their best to prepare you, and it's your time now to launch yourself into the world. You have learned a great deal in your time here, but most importantly, you have learned how to learn, and that will serve you very well throughout your lives. An inscription on a monument at the Air Force Academy says it best, I think. Our flight through life is sustained by the power of our knowledge. Fifty-some years ago, sitting where you are now, I can remember my mother being so proud of me and so happy that I had a job with Bell Laboratories, the research arm of the fabled Bell System. Surely, she thought and hoped, I would be there for all of my career. Now I stand before you, most honored to be your speaker today, in the middle of what I believe is my seventh distinct career. She would have been deeply concerned that I could not seem to keep a job. But with me, throughout all of those career opportunities, was my Lehigh education, supporting me in every way. And so it will be for you, too. I've always liked the quote from Bill Anders when he returned from Apollo 8, the first mission to orbit the moon. Bill took that iconic photo of the Earth rising over the lunar landscape. And he said, we came to explore the moon, and we discovered the Earth. You cannot imagine now where your journey will take you and what wonders you will experience. But know now that you are beginning that journey on a very good path. You are graduating today with a great education from a wonderful university. And Lehigh has always been a wonderful university, yet it is a very different university today from the one I attended. Back in the 60s, Bethlehem was a sleepy little town, and Lehigh was only about half of its current size. And unfortunately, all guys, kind of dull during the week, but we did make up for that on the weekends in Lehigh's best tradition of work hard, play hard. I remember sitting in my freshman dorm watching the light from the blast furnaces in South Bethlehem reflect off the night clouds. There were probably no more than two hotels and maybe four restaurants in town back then. But an, an exciting new place had just opened on Union Boulevard. It had these two yellow arches and you could drive up to a window and get a burger and fries in about two minutes. It was really amazing. And of course, we loved our cars back then, but the government was telling us that we would need to start wearing seatbelts. It was a very different time. But the most amazing development for us in the 60s was our music. And Lehigh was right there as it all evolved. Every weekend, the hill was rocking with bands from the tri-state area playing the sounds of the day. And each semester, we'd have a concert in Grace Hall with big names like Simon and Garfunkel, Peter, Paul, and Mary, Martha and the Vandellas, The Temptations, and Bob Dylan. We'd flock to the local record stores afterwards to buy their vinyl albums. On the national scene, our country was entering an exciting era. A young new president was asking us to think about what we could do for our country and for the world. He created the Peace Corps, and several of my fraternity brothers entered national service after graduating. And to this day, they will tell you it was the experience of their lives. And in his famous 1962 speech at Rice University, he challenged the nation to land an astronaut on the moon before the end of the decade, a feat most thought impossible. But sadly, on the Friday just before our Lehigh Lafayette weekend that next year, our young president was suddenly gone, and the country would never be the same. In the years that followed, we became entangled in a tragic war in Southeast Asia which was taking the lives of over a thousand Americans each month, 
including many Lehigh graduates and thousands more Vietnamese. Protests sprung up on many campuses around the country. Students occupied the president's office at Columbia University, but the war raged on. And as if the war weren't enough to protest, we were in a continuing struggle for civil rights. And in that same year, we lost Martin Luther King Jr. and then Bobby Kennedy. Like our past year, 1968 was a pretty awful year too. Yet in time we recovered and we healed as a nation. As Dr. King was fond of saying, the arc of history is long, but it does bend toward justice. The human experience is full of amazing feats and advances in our civilization. And yes, we did land an astronaut on the moon that decade. Actually, it was a total of 12 astronauts, and we brought them all back safely. We do move forward, albeit in fits and starts sometimes, and I think your generation is poised right now to move us forward in entirely new ways. I see it in your eyes every day. You will have your challenges for sure, furthering social justice, combating hunger and poverty, and controlling global climate change, to name just three. But you will rise to the occasion, I'm sure of it. You too will live in exciting times, and I'm certain you will make the world a better place. So people often ask me what I found most exciting about my years at NASA, expecting that I'll tell them what it's like to ride a rocket into space, or the feeling of weightlessness, or maybe the view out the window from Earth orbit. Actually, most often I tell them about the amazing job that NASA does in training the astronauts and the mission controllers to work together as a team. If you've watched the Apollo 13 movie, you saw just how critical that teamwork was in bringing the crew home safely after their oxygen tank had ruptured. They had to develop new procedures in real time to live in the lunar lander for the days it took them to sling around the moon and return to the Earth and then to manage their equipment, getting by only on battery power as they prepared the spacecraft for re-entry. It was NASA's finest moment, and an example of what can be accomplished by a highly motivated, well-trained team. Being a part of that team as we prepared to launch the space shuttle program was the most exciting time of my career. Throughout your careers, you will have many opportunities to be a member of a team focused on accomplishing something very new and challenging. You may have noticed above the entrance to Packard Lab that there are two statues of 19th century scientists looking down upon you. On the left is Michael Faraday, representing the electrical engineering department on that side of the building. The other is James Watt, representing the mechanical engineering department on their side of the building. Such was our mindset for much of the 20th century. But as our world has become ever more complex, the need for diverse, multidisciplinary teams to solve our most complicated problems has become ever more apparent. Today, Lehigh operates many interdisciplinary centers staffed with talented people from all of our colleges and departments. Engineers, scientists, economists, psychologists, artists, and many more contribute to the missions of these centers. They are designed to tackle the most complex problems we face in our environment, healthcare, education, and many other fields. Critical to the success of any such organization is the ability of its team members to work together effectively across their many disciplines and parent organizations. Just as NASA's success rides on the ability of the astronauts and the mission controllers to be a well-trained team, so does the success of any modern organization ride on the teamwork that must be cultivated throughout its membership. If I am to offer you the best advice I can as you go out into the world, it is to focus on being an effective team member. Do your part to be the best of your ability and continue to develop those team skills all of your life. All good leaders are first good team players. So do your very best to support the teams you join. So let me leave you with a little story I heard a couple years ago. MIT hosted an event to celebrate the 50th anniversary of the Apollo missions. And they invited me and about 20 other astronauts to participate in some panel discussions with a few of the, um, of the MIT scientists and engineers who had designed and built the Apollo flight computer. When that computer was built, the word software had not been coined yet. And the machine had a total of 32 kilobytes of memory. Hard to believe now that we could fly to the moon 
and land on it with so little capacity. At dinner that evening, Charlie Duke told this story. Charlie was one of the Apollo astronauts who would later walk on the moon with John Young during Apollo 16. But he is perhaps most well known as the mission control Capcom who said, we copy you Don Eagle, we're about to turn blue Don here, just after Neil Armstrong landed Apollo 11 with less than 30 seconds of fuel remaining. So Charlie and the others trained on how to use the Apollo computer during frequent trips to MIT. And they would often have to do that training in the middle of the night when they could practice aligning the navigation platform by shooting stars from the top of the famous Building 35. During one of those late night sessions, Charlie took a coffee break and was hanging out in one of the labs. A gentleman on the night cleaning staff came into the room to sweep the floor, and Charlie asked him how he liked working at MIT. He said, Mr. Duke, I'm so proud to work here. We're sending men to the moon, you know. Teamwork is a beautiful thing. So now it's your turn to go out there and make the world a better place. Godspeed, each of you. Last year, I was prepared to deliver a much different welcome to the then class of 2020 and to this amazing alumni body. Turns out luck was on your side and you were spared my attempt at trying to be witty and funny. This year, as I welcome both classes of 2020 and 2021 into the Lehigh University Alumni Association, I continue to be amazed by the strength, perseverance, and determination of the Lehigh graduates. The classes of 2020 and 2021 will go down in Lehigh's history for so many reasons, and you should all be so very proud of what you have been able to achieve despite all of the hurdles thrown at you over the past year. I personally am so excited to have you join this amazing family of alumni. I am confident you will find your post-graduation experience as fulfilling and awarding as I am sure you have found your time at Lehigh. I also am confident I speak for all of the alumni when I say we are here for you as sponsors, mentors, friends, and fellow alumni, and look so forward to meeting many of you in person at any one of our amazing alumni events. And of course, at Lehigh Loft, where we can proudly put back on our brown and white and take down that other school. Welcome again, classes of 2020 and 2021 to the Lehigh University Alumni Association.